Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today we're going to be talking about something that it's not as bright and happy, and yet it's all about healing. As an Armenian who grew up with very much with my grandparents, especially my grandma, uh, my grandparents were um, part of the Armenian genocide who during the uh, genocide, what happened in 1915, and uh, they were taken uh, to Beirut with uh, through uh, the American Red Cross, and uh, they grew up in the orphanage in Beirut. They got uh, married there and had three children. And years and years later, in order to go to homeland, uh, they stopped at I in Iran and they stayed there. So that's where my mom was born, and thereafter meeting my father. And yes. I come as the result. So the reason I'm talking about this is because tomorrow is where Armenians all over the world celebrate, not, on, not only celebrate, but remember this day as a day to uh, recognize the genocide that happened to the Armenians. Um, that put aside, it was how my grandmother shared the story with me. She would sit for hours and talk about it because she lost her entire family and except her brother. And I believe she had an aunt somewhere that she never found. So it was her brother and herself. And of course, my grandfather, he lost most of his family and they never found the part, uh, his part of family. They didn't have ancestry then, right? So grandma wrote journals and journals about her history of what happened, the loss and walking uh, during the time that the American Red Cross was taking them from Urfa to um, Beirut and how she lost her mom on during the walk and her mom fell and uh, they dragged her over her mom's body. So she would recall that and get very emotional and then she would talk about everything else. But what she would do is play the piano and write. See, what I didn't understand, she was journaling. And journaling was one way of releasing the emotions connected to experiences and also documenting a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, my grandmother, a month before she passed away at age 94, uh, 20 some years ago in 19 actually she died few months pr prior to the 9-11 in 2021 uh, she passed away in July and that's how I remember it so that's another traumatic experience today I want to talk about how we heal trauma because she was the person that taught me without realizing that through music, through speaking, through journaling, and finding her peers that there was about eight of the women, her friends that were through the genocide, that they came together through the orphanage to Beirut and they were all together and then they immigrated to uh, Tehran, Iran, they were all together and most of them came to America 
at different times, but they would sit and play the lotto and then talk about the old times. And then believe it or not, they would play cards and lotto and play music and sing the songs of the old times. And they would cry and they would commiserate together and they would laugh of the hard times they had and say, do you remember how we used to cook and we didn't have anything and how you would bring it? So in effect is understanding trauma. All trauma is stressful, but not all stress is traumatic. And where it matters is to understand trauma because the origin of trauma comes from this Greek word that is wound. And the wound, the trauma is a wound. It's a psychic wound. And I want you to understand uh, as I come to explain to you that wounds leave a scar, an imprint on us, either emotional, psychic, or it marks in our nervous system, in our body, and yes, in our psyche. And it shows up in multiple ways that may not be helpful years later unless you know how to treat it. Because the nature of a wound is what? If a wound stays open, right? And it's not treated very well, then it infects. And that infection, no matter if you put a Band-Aid on it, which is very temporary, uh, the wound will create a pus and the pus, we have to treat the pus. So when it shows up years later, it might not be helpful. So the nature of wound is if it stays open and not treated will cause infection and hurt you more, right? And it will not heal because it will reoccur over and over, over and over. On the other hand, when you just dismiss it and you constantly put band-aids on it and it's a temporary healing because you have not taken the, you have not opened the wound and treated it like what I call in my business, uh, as a hypnotherapist, when I work with my clients is evoking what was, which is literally acknowledging, going deep within and opening that wound to acknowledge what was, it becomes, it's, it becomes callous. It scars over. And when it scars, what does that mean? It becomes hard, it becomes rigid, and it is not flexible, right? So there are a lot of us who have wounds in a relationship, perhaps from the past, it can be uh, either war, it can be genocide, it can be relationships, rape, abuse, any of that. When you come to people and they say, just get over it, time will heal, time will make it easier but it does not heal until you are ready to heal it. So trauma, literally, uh, it stops emotional growth and development. So it's not what happened. See, here's the thing. Trauma is not what happened to you. It is not the war, the abuse, or the pain. It is the wound and the emotions sustained during what happened to you. It is the emotions that you sustained, that you felt during the experience, either through war or through the experience of, yes, either rape or abuse in a relationship or something traumatic that happened, 9-11. So, and it's the emotion connected to the experience that has to be healed. And that is exactly what I do when I work with my clients, tapping into, evoking it first, 
to come to embrace what is the reality right here, right now. What is it that you are feeling in order for us to heal that? It's the emotion connected to the habit, to the pattern, to the behavior, to the trauma, so that you can heal and evolve to what it is that you want. Journaling is one of them. So here are seven ways that I have found that it becomes easier. Individuals are journaling through this healing that there are seven steps that I believe will help you or the ones that you love that have gone through traumatic experiences for them to heal. One is acknowledge the wound. It's evoking it. It's acknowledging it. It's uh, realizing it, right? Instead of denying it, so that it involves recognizing and experiencing, accepting the experience that happened to you. Stop dismissing it and denying it. We pay more attention in healing our body than our emotional wounds. So the next one is seek support. It can be support from peers, support from family members who have gone through it. Talk to your grandparents. Talk to your parents. Talk to your siblings, your loved ones, or talk and share what is happening with you. Get support groups. I've created support groups that we meet here at my office to go through and talk about this and it helps your healing much easier it's not healing it but it will make it easier the next one is practice self-compassion truly be kinder and gentler with yourself um, as you navigate through this healing process in that recognizing Self-compassion is recognizing that there is no judgment. It's not judging yourself, analyzing or criticizing and coming up with all kinds of scenarios and saying it was your fault that you were in the wrong place at the wrong time, you did this wrong you said that wrong it doesn't matter because it's already passed what you do with what happened and the emotions connected to it the traumatic experience the emotions connected to, tra to the trauma is what matters now and that's the part that needs to be healed and yes challenge negative thought process Instead of going into that negative, analyzing, judging, criticizing, could have, should have, would have, even blame or placing guilt on a nation, on a country, on a person, or even yourself. It doesn't help until you heal the wound, right? And practicing self-care and processing the emotions is another one self-care self-compassion and processing the emotions and lastly setting boundaries for yourself setting boundaries for you to realize hi minas john thank you so much i know so many of us go through and even you uh with the loss of your wife, that's an emotional wound. But remembering the fantastic years that you spent together, the years, the experiences, the good ones, the feelings that you had when you hugged one another, when you kissed your daughter, the offspring of your love. And that is how we come to heal. It's 
Yes, sometimes is replacing the emotions of the negative, the pain, with remembering the good. Because we forget how much goodness there is in this new generation, in the relationships, and within yourself. So one of the things that I talk about is this bracelet because I was, I've had it for so long, I never take mine off. I even shower with this. Hi, Seda John, how are you, my dearest? Um, is remembering that our past experiences in life, we numb our children even for them not to feel it, but to remember something and talk about something without necessarily understanding something because they may not have really understood and they can't be compassionate about something that it's not spoken. So stop hiding children and protecting them constantly from having that pain and understanding what it is to feel pain, to feel angry, to feel emotions and realizing and understanding that there are healthier ways to express everything instead of having tantrums but speaking compassionately speaking their anger what it is they're angry about because underneath anger is hurt so what is it that it's hurting you i hear you i see you you can share it and speak it and if you want to be angry instead of having the tantrum you can have the opportunity to share it and if it is difficult to express it in words then write it play the music allow your feelings to be expressed in a healthier healthier boundary healthier way and if you don't feel heard instead of raising the voice when we feel we are not heard we've raised our voice to be heard and it's all knowing there is a hurt there is a wound that has not been healed so those were the steps and if there is any way I can be of help to you you know through hypnotherapy we tap into the subconscious mind that truly stores the emotions the emotional connection to patterns habits behaviors and the traumatic experiences to heal the wound the emotions connected to it and with that i want to honor my ancestry my heritage my grandparents and to say i do remember you and will always remember and I am proud to be of the Armenian genocide survivor and honor this day and every day because being present being alive is the most important thing and for that I am grateful and feel blessed and for all of you remembering this day or any day of your life, I want you to say, I matter. Thank you. God bless you. See you next week. Bye, Minasjan. Bye, Seda. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.